Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another Parasite Podcast. And today I'm very excited to share our guest with you, Deeper Depths. I've been watching your channel. I, I'll get into how I found you and stuff soon. But first, I want to give you a chance to say hello and to let uh, people know a little bit about you and where they can find you. Thank you so much, uh, Seek. It certainly is an honor to be a part of the Parasite podcast uh, tonight. Uh, it's just incredible to have made your acquaintance, and I look forward to uh, sharing and having the conversation that we're getting ready to have. Uh, you can find me on Deeper Depths uh, if you are on YouTube or on Twitch, as well as Twitter. I think on Twitter, I'm at the Deeper Depths, but on Twitch and YouTube, it's just deeper depths. You'll see a purple and yellow logo. And I'm pretty much a content creator, a streamer. And also I have a podcast that I host called The Deeper Level. So check it out as soon as you get an opportunity. Absolutely. And I'll put all those links down below so everyone can find them at the click of a button for you, sir. Thank you. Uh, hey, you're welcome, man. And yeah, this is uh, interesting because like normally my Parasite podcast, it started with me. I had like consistent viewers that would come to my channel and comment all the time, like I'm sure you have. And yes, it's and I was like, oh, I want to do a show where I, I kind of put the spotlight on them and I'll, I'll invite them on the show. But over time, I started like looking at other YouTubers and being like, oh, who else could I get on here? And like, who? how can we spread this love in this community? And I came across you because uh, a, a young man named Evan Falarka, who I've kind of been online acquaintances with, uh, you know, we, we keep in touch every now and again, but um, even less now that I'm not on Twitter. But I saw him post your interview with Tony Todd, who I'm. Um, just the hugest fan of, and I know you are too, and he's going to be voicing Venom in the upcoming Spider-Man game. So that's kind of how I came across your channel. What, how big of a moment was that for you to get someone like Tony Todd to like, you know, to be on your show? And then uh, you get to ask like pretty much every question I've ever wanted to ask him and you, you nailed it. So I was like, good. I don't need to interview him now. I could just watch this episode <laughs> over and over. <laughs> Uh, listen, thank you so much uh, for that. Um, so I'll kind of bring you up to speed on on how that happened. Uh, you know, it really was just an epic moment um, on the way everything came together. Uh, we actually had a chance to connect earlier in 2022. I think it was around maybe July or something like that. Uh, as I started to, you know, be a content creator and kind of get my videos out there, uh, I looked on Twitter one day and I guess maybe it was either Lejeune or Sadat the Gamer or mm -hmm. uh, Jay Shock Blast, someone else maybe that, uh, you know, has the reach uh, with his channel or with his page rather on social media shared something of mine. And uh, lo and behold, I looked up one day and, you know, I checked Twitter and uh, it said, Tony Todd is following you. So, you know, the first thing that I thought <laughs> maybe this is like, a parody account or, you know, maybe it's not real. It's not really the real Tony Todd. And so, you know, at first um, I didn't really think much about it. Cause again, I didn't think that it really was a real thing. Right. So once I checked out his account and saw that it was actually his authentic account, you know, I was just like, wow, you know, um, <laughs> Tony Todd is following me. So, you know, uh, of course, once you follow each other, uh, you have an opportunity to inbox and, you know, send personal messages sure. and this, that and other. And so as time went on, you know, of course, I didn't just uh, become connected with him. And then the next day hit him with the inbox. You know, it was several months down the road where maybe September or something like that. And, you know, I noticed I said, well, you know, we haven't really heard any news for Spider-Man 2. You know, they showed that first trailer in like 2021. Um, right. But that was it. You know, we didn't see anything else. So, you know, I reached out and I said, hey, you know, let me try this. I don't know if he'll see it. I don't know if he actually runs his account because, you know, a lot of times celebrities have people who handle their social media accounts. So I said, hey, what the heck? You know, um, I've always been that person. The answer is either yes or no. So I sent him an inbox message and I was like, you know, hey, I'm putting together a podcast, this, that and the other. And, you know, I've already done several episodes and, you know, I wanted to see if you would have any free time to come on. So anyhow, of course, several days had went by and I had even forgot that I sent him the message. Well, finally he responds and uh, he was like, you know, so what's the timeline, this, that, and other. And I said, man, you know, I know you're extremely busy, but I, I basically would make my time work around whatever is good for you. Sure. And so initially he told me, Seek, that, you know, his daughter was in the process at that time of getting married. They were planning the wedding. So we had set a date for like, 
uh, October, I believe. Okay. Yeah. And we set the date for October and I get ready to do, to do the podcast. And, uh, you know, we're like minutes away from the stream. And so uh, I sent him the link. I sent him the message because, you know, I also use um, StreamYard. So yeah. I sent him the link and, you know, we're minutes away. And of course, I'd already advertised it. I put the flyer out and everything. And, you know, we're two minutes away and I'm like, OK, well, you know, again, he's got a lot going on. So, you know, maybe it's just last minute, you know, he's going to come on. So uh, we got to about 10 minutes into the episode. So, of course, you know, uh, I'm as professional as I always can be. So I went ahead and started the podcast. And of course, I'm talking, you know, with the audience and the viewers, you know, I've already put the advertisement out there that I've got Tony Todd coming and this, that, and other. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, it's 710. So inwardly I'm panicking, but outwardly, you know, we're all hanging out. So we're in the chat, we're chatting. So it got to be about 715. So what I did was I explained to everybody that was watching, I was like, you know, hey, um, maybe there was some, type of difficulty something could have came up because i know that he had said he was planning a wedding with his daughter anything right. could happen you know and that's why i'm always careful seek uh i did not go on the attack i've never been that type of person you know sure. I did not get no on there and say, yeah oh he shot me a ghost you know he right. this that I, I didn't say any of that i just explained to the audience that you know i'd be back with them with more information once i knew but we went ahead finished the episode and just hung out so uh with that being said make a long story short like two days after the podcast, uh, mm -hmm. I hadn't talked to him, hadn't heard anything from him. He sends me an inbox message and it was probably the most credible thing that anybody could have done. I mean, you know, he basically apologized for missing the episode. Then he explained to me that, you know, something happened that he had to take care of with the wedding with his daughter. And I told him, hey, man, I get it. I understand. And I'm pretty sure that he went back to watch my episode of how I handled that. Uh huh. Yeah. Because I told him in my message, I was like, hey, everything's great. No problem. You know, I explained to the people this, that, and other, blah, blah, blah. So he ends up saying, hey, man, whatever it takes to make it up to you, you just name the date. I promise you I'm there. So wow. with that being said, we then set the podcast for November, which right. that was the actual podcast that ended up happening. And my mind was blown. You know, I initially did it just um you know for the experience of chatting with him about spider-man 2 but i never dreamed that evan falarka would see it and share it and you sure. know we ended up getting on screen rant um comicbook.com i mean we got yeah. covered it was the first thing that ever went viral so it was huge <laughs> yeah you got some juicy scoops in there uh because that was really a lot of our first time hearing him kind of giving it uh his impression of venom and what it was like to play the character and for me, as like a guy who just makes Venom content, um, like for the past five years, I was like, oh my God, what? Like Tony Todd talked about Venom. And <laughs> then I went and listened to your show and I immediately, as soon as that episode was done, I was like, I got to see more stuff from Deeper Depths. I got to see more things. And Thank I immediately you. went to your other stuff. I mean, I think I subscribed to you not even 10 minutes into your interview with Tony Todd. I was like, well, I already like this guy. So that's cool. And, and I'm glad that like, uh, that someone really cool who is a fan got this like, chance to talk to tony todd who is one of my favorite actors of all time i love night of the living dead i love a candy man like i love a lot of the stuff he's done um yes and uh, and I, when i when they cast him as venom i was just like, I, like <laughs> yeah <laughs> are you kidding that's like the perfect voice like, for venom. perfect yeah it's it's amazing um so let's yeah let's go back a step because and we'll get back to evan and how i, I found you again but i, I really want to i want to know like um you know, what, what got you into content creating? Cause, uh, this is such a step that some people like they want it. Some people, cause in now in modern day, like last five or 10 years, they want to take that step and they're, they, maybe they do and they do one episode and they realize how much work it is or, or it's, you know, they realize maybe they don't have a passion for the topic they create the, the show, their show on. And it's a thing that shakes a lot of people loose and they don't stay consistent with it. So you have been consistent and you've gotten some great guests. You had Caboose on recently and other people like you've been doing a really good job. So, and then your, your Thank gaming you. content is amazing. So like, wh like what keeps, what made you start it? And then what keeps you going every, every episode? So um, this is actually going to be kind of like a layered answer. So okay. uh, video games, my entire life has always been my passion. I grew up in eighties. 
I was born in 1982. So my first system was the <laughs> regular NES, you know, uh -huh. the Nintendo 8-bit system. So I grew up on Mario Brothers, Duck Hunt, Contra, you know, all of that, which I know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, so video games has always been my passion ever since I was old enough to hold a controller. So I think I got my first system in 85. I was like maybe three, four years old. Of course, you know, I would have to watch uh, my big brother play. He was three years older than me, but he always used to let me hold a controller and act like I was playing. You know, I sure. wasn't really plugged into the system, <laughs> but he would give me the controller, the yeah. extra one. And I'm thinking I'm doing stuff. So, oh you know, God. video games has always been a passion for me. Well, throughout um, each generation, you know, seeing the evolution of gaming, seeing the Super Nintendo system, um, a 16 bit breakthrough in technology, then seeing Nintendo 64, uh, you know, and seeing games advance. Nintendo 64 kind of took things to another level with uh, couch co op, you know, because you had four plug in ports. It was a system that was ahead of its time. So I remember what it was to game on the couch with friends, you know, with Mario Kart, Goldeneye. Mm -hmm. So I've always had that sense of multiplayer. Uh, well, then when gaming finally reached the stage of where gaming was online, I started, you know, gaming online. And so throughout the process of gaming online, I started meeting different content creators such as, you know, Sadat the Gamer, Lejeune, uh, J Shock Blast. And, you know, we all had a chance to game together. So then I got exposed to their channels and I'm like, you know, well, how cool is this? Well, again, you know, a lot of people see content creators uh, such as myself, but you really don't know. And I, I want to say kudos to you because we were talking before the podcast started and, mm -hmm. you know, you're probably on like 800 different episodes, man. And I just want to say <laughs> kudos to you and congratulations because uh, yeah. people really don't see the amount of work that goes into content creation. Like, Very of true. course, I was as aspired to do it just from watching other channels. Uh, and now that I'm 40 years old, because I started at 40, I'm 41, but I started at 40. And so it's kind of like one of those, I don't want to call it a midlife crisis, but I wanted to see at this age and stage in my life, could I learn something new? You know, could yeah. I take on a passion project? Could I learn how to work the software? Could I learn how to, you know, work a stream deck and, you know, all these different things that I never had any knowledge of? Because going into content creation, you think, all I need is, hey, a webcam and a PlayStation 5 and I'm ready, <laughs> you right. know, but right. six or seven thousand dollars later. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, so I've got this computer and, and all of these things. And I had a guy here local in my city who I know pretty well is a, a great friend of mine uh, named Sleeper Kid. And so he dabbled with uh, just streaming, not so much as content creation, but streaming. And he was like, hey, man, if you want to do it, I can come over to the house, help you show how to set everything up. So he did all that, man. And, uh, you know, uh, the rest was was history. Of course, uh, there was a lot of trial and errors. I know what it was to stream or to start a podcast. In fact, the very first podcast that I did with the deeper level, I started the podcast on mute. You know, I forgot no, to sure. unmute my mic. Of course. So, Everyone's we all done that. OK, OK, good. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured it's happened to, you know, everybody before. And, and sure. I had people tell me that, no, it's no big deal. You know, we've had it happen all the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, here we are. You know, it was just kind of one of those things I wanted to see at this stage in my life. Could I learn it? And here we are. I call it, you said midlife crisis, but I call it midlife discovery. Um, I'm Love a... It. I'm uh, 40. Also, I'll be 41 in two days from now. Okay, awesome. Um, and yeah. uh, and I'm like, and I'm the same way. But I I started I, for me at least it was um, I I, I was on a podcast called um, uh, Harmontown, which is a uh, Dan Harmon who created Community and uh, Rick and he was a co-creator Rick and Morty, and nice. he he used to do a podcast and I was just an audience member for like a year, um, and then one day in for all that whole year he was like you know, you, you got to come up, you got to come up, man. I love your story. Like you got to come up. And finally he got me to go up on the show. And, and after that, I was like, okay, I like that. I liked talking yeah. to people and, you know, and, and I think I found kind of a, a groove and a niche of like what I wanted to do with my life um, as like a hobby, um, sure. you know? So, so yeah, there'd be times where, like you said, people don't see the work. Like yeah. I worked, uh, I was a manager at Lego. I worked full time, you know, 40 to 50 hours a week. And I still pumped out like 14 fully edited episodes in one week uh, wow. in, in, in a seven day span. Right. And people were like, that's two a day and a full time job. And people are like, how the hell? Right. <laughs> and, right. Uh, and I'm like, because you need to sometimes. And uh, yes. and also you feel it, like you said, like 
Yeah. You start off and you go, I would like to do this. Rage Nation, you shouted out some of the people that kind of inspired you. And Rage Nation is this kid who inspired me who's his name's Alex. He's up in Canada. He makes Transformer content. Okay. And uh, and he was following the the development of the Transformer movies. I think it was Dark of the Moon, the third one. And from then on, I watched what he did. He has a simple setup like me, just camera, background, you know, his bedroom's the background. Sure. And he just T- talks about what he loves and cuts out, you know, anytime he, he fumbles his words. And I'm like, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep it casual. And, uh, and that's, and, and I'm glad, I mean, starting at 40, that's awesome. And you're, and you're learning stuff. That's why I call it midlife discovery. Cause when I started this, I didn't really know sh- anything about editing. Yeah. And, uh, and then I learned quick, like I, and I watched tutorials online and I just like, I want to just know, I want to know how to do some of this. Now I make my own music for the channel. Um, you know, and wow. I do, I do all my own intros. I do some artwork, but then I also pay artists to do artwork too. Cause I believe in paying artists uh, to do stuff. So sure. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. And the, the roads that it leads us to you, like, uh, you, like I said, Evan Falarka was someone we kind of ran into each other online because obviously cover Spider-Man and I cover Venom. Mm -hmm. And so of course our paths would cross at some point. And um, I just found myself cheering him on. He was like, he made big decisions in his life, like not going to college and pursuing, you know, uh, his channel and everything. And and I was just like, no, you got to encourage that. I mean, it's, that's a risky move. And, um, and, and, and big, you know, big shout out to him. And I think he makes great content. And so that's why when he shared you and I was like, of course he's going to share other great content. So I'm glad he led me to you, man. And I guess the next question I want to ask then is the stuff you make, because we'll start with video game streaming, because you have a passion for that. And uh, and I it grew up in the same time period as you did. I'm the older brother. I was the one who unplugged the second controller for my <laughs> brother, who was three years younger than me. Um, so what games are you playing right now? I know the answer to this, but I, I would love my audience to hear it. And And what are some games that like you have played that you loved and some games you're really looking forward to playing. Okay, sure, sure. So um, my number one genre of games, if if I had to just only stick with one genre and throw everything else away, you know, if it came down to that being decision somehow, it definitely would be RPGs. Uh, I'm a huge fan of RPGs. So there's always going to be Final Fantasy in the mix. Like Square Enix, I remember when it was Square Soft, you mm-hmm. know, years ago. Um, you know, Final Fantasy VII is what kind of got me into the RPG genres. I remember Final Fantasy one, two, three, but at that time I didn't play them. You know, it was kind of overlooked. Right. Um, but Final Fantasy VII made me realize what I had been missing. So I went back and played all of those games. Um, probably the most consistent game I've ever played just for, uh, a long length of time is Final Fantasy 11. You know, that was the first game to go online for Final Fantasy, Mm -hmm. uh, back in 2002, you know, they released it with the PlayStation two. It had that HDD drive that, you know, you plug into the back. And I think I had dial up internet at the time. It was, (laughs) it was crazy, man. You know, so I would spend probably 30 minutes just to get, uh, on the server, but, uh, I got super, super addicted to that game. I played that from 02 all the way to about 2016. Uh, I tried to make the swap to Final Fantasy 14, yeah. but it just wasn't the same, mostly because the friends that I played with didn't come over to 14. So okay. it was a little different online. But uh, recently I played through Jedi Survivor, uh, Star Wars, and let me tell you, that was incredible there's there's certain parts of it that i purposely didn't stream because i didn't want it to be a spoiler for anyone else some things happened in that game that just blew my mind i never saw it coming so that that's really a a thrill ride there i'm playing marvel's midnight suns i'm waiting on storm to drop uh thursday she's on my birthday yes do dlc (laughs) character um that game has been phenomenal i think that if it had come out earlier in 2022 not so late uh Mm -hmm. in december it could have been in the honorable mention for game of the year. I mean, I'm not saying it would have won it, sure. but that game is a comic book lover's dream. Um, Definitely. So I'm looking forward to getting Final Fantasy 16, of course, next month. Um, Spider-Man 2 is my most anticipated game. Now, yeah. don't get me wrong. I, Final Fantasy 16, I'm ready for that. But right. the hype for Spider-Man 2 is just unreal. Unreal. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, amen to that. I, and uh, it's funny. So, what? If, let me sidetrack for a second because I'm a big uh, uh, Final Fantasy fan too. What is your? It sounds like Eleven's your favorite Final Fantasy. Is that correct? Eleven is my favorite online experience. Okay. Yeah. Um, but 
as far as just a console game, single mm-hmm. player, it's going to be between Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy Tactics. Um, when I first played Tactics, bro, it I, I got that game on release because yeah. Tactics came out uh, after that, you know, Final Fantasy VII had come yes. out on PlayStation 1. Before 8, yeah. Yes, exactly, yeah. before 8. And mm-hmm. that game just blew me away. Um, so yeah, tactics, it's my favorite final fantasy of all time is going to be between tactics and seven. That's amazing. So a uh, flat out, I'm not, I'm not even uh, lying to you. Uh, my favorite final fantasy game is tactics. What? Yes. <laughs> out of all yes. of them, out of every game. <laughs> and I play yeah. them all. Um, just like you, uh, that's amazing. I couldn't believe you just said tactics. I was like, no way. <laughs> like yeah. this, I just tactics, made a best man. friend. Um, oh. you know, I think it was, uh, Ramza yeah, was Ramza. the, um, you know, protagonist there in mm-hmm. that game and i'm telling you man it oh god uh gafgarion i mean yeah. just the characters that you yeah. meet Delita. throughout the process yes yeah. absolutely that that yeah. game is epic man yeah i ha- so i have that game on my phone uh the the really the, yeah they actually put out the war of the lions version the psp version oh yes yes you can you can buy it on mobile devices uh it's for like 10 bucks and nice uh, I've been actually playing it and recording it and uploading it to my channel, my gaming channel oh, uh, and, and, and adding commentary afterwards. And I'm like, sure. I'm gushing. I'm like, I know I've beaten that game probably in, in the 30s amount of times, like 30 yeah. something times. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that game so much. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, well, you're my best friend forever now. Um, <laughs> uh, that's what a great answer. And yeah, I, I mean, of course, seven, I'm also a big fan of eight too, but I, I love yes. Tactics yes. so much. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to 16 and and uh there is and I'm glad you're actually one of the cuz I have friends that, you know, stream games and stuff but as far as I know, you and I are the only people in my orbit that I know are streaming Midnight Suns. Um Yes. Uh, th- it's so weird that um the when people saw the battle systems, I think that turned off one half of the audience mm-hmm. and then the half that was maybe interested in the battle systems, they saw the Abbey stuff and that kind of turned them off. So mm-hmm. it didn't really it didn't really please any big chunk of audiences. So all these niche hardcore comic book fans who gave it a chance all seem to really enjoy it. Like when I look in their comments, it's just people going, man, this is a sleeper hit. You know, I wish more people was playing this Um, and them doing storm. Like I'm so, so excited. And I even joked when they did the, when they first announced storm, I said, I wonder if they're going to do Bloodstorm. And here, that's the name of the DLC. Yes. And I was like, oh my God. And it comes out on my birthday. I'm like, are they following me? Am I on the Truman Show? <laughs> um, I love that game so much. And and I love, I watched you play it. I, I usually try to get ahead of people and then watch other people play it. But you, I think you were playing a mission up in front of me. And I was like, I don't care. I like your channel. I like your vibe. And, you. uh, and you're really Thank cool you. about responding to me. Like if I comment in there and, and, yeah. and as well as everyone else in your chat. Um so I'm glad you're playing that game and I, I'm looking forward. I haven't even beaten it yet. Have you beaten it yet? Yes, I, I have beaten it. Okay. Um, and y- I don't know if you've, if you haven't seen any spoilers for it. I haven't, not a single one. For a treat. When okay, you beat it, trust me, you are in for a treat, man. Um, a lot of people are saying that, or I saw a couple people come in that Storm would be like the last DLC. Now, of course, uh-huh. this, I didn't hear that from, our access games sure but some creators were saying like yeah this is the last you know uh dlc ever like not of this season but ever right. ever but right. form your own opinion man because when you beat it you're gonna see something that just makes you think i don't see how that's possible okay all right i'm looking forward to it because yeah the um my plan was i knew about all the dlcs and roughly when they would come out mm-hmm. um and uh and i say roughly because storm was the only one that kind of was off schedule um yep, yep. but um but I did, I got, I heard some things about the game, but so I purposely, I got my, uh, I got it in December when it came out, uh-huh. but I didn't have time to play it until January, like first week of January. Got and it. I've been playing it since then, but I'm, I, I only play a certain amount, one because of work and schedule and life and stuff. Sure. But two is because I wanted to just play it one time through as the DLCs were coming out. So I'm on, I think I have only three major story missions left. So I'm pretty close okay. to the end. But I want to do. I want to finish Storm's DLC first, and then complete the game. Sure. Um, so, uh, so, but I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm a huge Ghost Rider fan, and uh, and one of the other characters I've done shows on on this channel has been about Ghost Rider. I have every appearance he's ever been in, every comic. Book. Wow. Um, wow. And and that's including all the Ghost Rider, every Ghost Rider. Nice. Um, so, so I'm loving the game as a Ghost Rider fan too. So, and as a Blade fan, who uh, yeah. 
God, I love Blade. So um, let's get into uh, also some other. So aside from gaming and stuff, which I, I know we'll keep talking about throughout this a little bit more, but you also do really great interviews. I got to say, like you're just here having you here too. Like I can tell a difference sometimes when I have someone on who's not really on camera a lot and I, I, you know, I try to make them comfortable so they'll talk more. And, and sure. but with you, you, it's natural. Like you're made to do this um, and you use it really well when you, when you're doing interviews too. So like what, you know, what's kind of your process when you go going into an interview with somebody? And then what do you look for to have someone on your show? Like what, what are the, you know, do you just kind of, Hey, I enjoy this person. I'm going to reach out to him and roll the dice like you did with Tony Todd. Or is it like, is there more to it? I'd love to hear kind of your thought on that. Yeah. So I, I definitely get that question. You know what you're asking, you know, what I try to look for, um, you know, whenever I'm inviting a guest on is what, kind of sparks my interest, you know, someone <laughs> that, you know, I'm kind of curious about that I would always like um, to question, you know, there, there are several people that are quote unquote celebrities. And, you know, I'm, I'm not starstruck by any means because I, I've come up kind of in the, you know, professional arena as far as motivational speaking outside, you know, just like my day job uh -huh. and things like that. And in the automotive industry. So you get to meet a lot of interesting and wealthy people. So, you know, it, it's never about the money. It's about who's interesting to me. You know, okay. um, my favorite artist and all of this plays a part of this answer to make it all make sense. My favorite mm -hmm. artist has always been Prince. Um, and so I got to go to a Prince concert in 97 uh, that my brother got me tickets to while wow. he was in college. Uh -huh. And we were seventh row, bro uh at a prince concert and people like that have just always been one of those people you know if i could meet somebody now of course i've never met him personally but you know right. we just went to a concert but if i could meet somebody you know he was on that list now of course unfortunately you know he's passed on but people that's you know always interesting with me someone i feel like i could learn something from mm -hmm. or glean something from it's never really about the views because you know like i said when i first reached out to Tony Todd, it was more so about me yeah. uh, personally of what I could learn as it was to, okay, this is going to blow up. This is going to get national attention. I wasn't even thinking about that. You know, I had sure. no idea. And again, I know it's already been said, but shout out to Evan Falarka, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he literally uh, changed my life uh, and the trajectory of my channel with doing what he did because up until that time, we had no personal contact or relationship. And, you know, afterwards, I was able to connect with him and he was a guest on the show. And mm -hmm. so just appreciate everything you've done, Evan. But, um, you know, so with Tony Todd, um, just his voice is is yeah. captivating, yeah. you know. So uh, just him as an orator, him uh, just just his voice and, and tone, you know. So I just kind of wanted to, I thought he would be, very interesting to interview and he was because this was like a wholesome interview like yes. even outside of spider-man 2 we got into just some life stuff man and and i learned so much so that's kind of what i always look for you know someone who i can glean from who inspires me or someone that i feel like i can learn something from any guest you see on the deeper level podcast is always someone that i have a great admiration for and someone that i think I could pick up some nuggets and, you know, uh, also kind of spread that to other people that uh, they inspire and, you know, that aspire to do what they're doing. So, like, even with you coming on, man, you know, I've got questions set oh, good. <laughs> uh, uh, that, that are that are loaded, in a sense, yeah. for me to eat, you know, for yeah. me to get, you know, what I feel like I need. Because I really love your channel. I love your setup. And, you know, we've kind of had an opportunity to talk before just kind of through one of my streams, man. And you, you've done some things that a lot of people may not know. And so I kind of want to bring exposure to that and the people that you've had an opportunity and been fortunate to glean from and be in their circle. So yeah, that's, that's kind of what I look for. You know, it's, it's, it starts, it's personal before it's public. Yeah. You know, whenever I look for a guest, it's, it's what I could learn as well. Uh, not so much as about the views, you know, of course we love the support on the channel, but I'm also looking to to learn. Yeah, no, and I, I I'm flattered as all high heaven that you you invited me on your show, and I'm looking forward to being on it. Uh, I think uh, 
some of the stuff I share with you, I think will flip your lid. Um, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot even on my own channel that I just never get the opportunity to talk about, you know, like sure. uh, we, it never comes up. Like, I think I did one episode about black Panther in regards to like um, symbiotes and venom and like a proximity comic where they appeared together. And uh, so I get to tell a little bit about working with Reggie. Um, but it's like, I, there's just some things that there's no window and I don't want to force it in, you know, sure, sure. And I'm like, yeah, it's not part of the topic. It's fine. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of uh, things and it's so, again, you saying Prince, Prince is my favorite musician. Uh, wow. Yeah. So the, the color, uh, the um, uh, purple rain was the first movie I saw in the movie theaters when I was a kid. Nice. Um, and uh, ever since then, I've always been a big admirer of his and I love Kevin Smith's story. I don't know if yes. you've ever heard it from uh, where he did the millennial documentary that yes. never got released. I'm yep. like, I want to find that vault. I want to, I want to write a script <laughs> where we break into that vault and take it and watch that documentary. Absolutely. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, well, that's, the, I mean, that's awesome. And, and I'm the same way. Like, uh, like I said, when I started Parasite Podcast, I, I was looking at comments, people who just took time out of their day to comment on almost every single one of my videos. And some people who even challenged me, like if I say like, oh, it's, you know, this is what I think. And someone will go, you know what? I actually disagree with it. And they, you know, they kind of push back and, I'm like, sure. you know, I, if they push back enough and, and they're respectful about it, I'm like, I got to, I, so I created the parasite podcast so I could talk to people like that, you know? Right. Um, and, the, and it's been great. And it's, and I feel like every episode I learn and grow. And, and when I was on your stream, I was like, yeah, I just like this guy. Like that's you, for me, that's enough. Like I, I just, I like just leaving these videos. I mean, I always say like, this is for my mom in case my health and other things ever get worse. My mom has all these videos. She can go back and just see me smiling wow. and happy wow. at every video. And she can see the people I've met along the way. And, uh, and that's kind of the whole point of my show. That's what keeps me going is just like, and Beautiful. the fact that it's fun. Um, but it's, uh, it's just one of those where I, I, I watch enough of your streams where I'm, and sometimes I'm there and I don't comment. I'm pretty bad at that. Um, I, I, I will like have you on, on like my Xbox, you know, and it's on my sure. TV and I don't have a keyboard for it. So I'm just like, I'll leave it on so he can get the views and the support and I'll give a Thank thumbs you. up on it, you know, Thank you. and then I'll, I'll come back in the next stream and, and on my laptop and I'll talk to him. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm curious though, like, is there other things, you know, you got gaming streams, you got interviews, you got, you know, like you said, you're doing things for personal growth and, and discovery and learning. Is there other, any other type of content or, or, um, something you'd like a, a dream video you'd like to make that like uh, on a subject that you haven't quite tackled yet on your channel? Um, you know what I, I thought about, um, let's see, we do have the podcast. We, mm -hmm. we are streaming games. Um, but of course I'm streaming directly from my PlayStation five. You know, I'm just streaming okay. it through, uh, my PC. And so, mm -hmm. Sometimes the challenge that I'm faced with on my content is there will be this game that's, you know, the visual fidelity is just out of this world, like Horizon Fit and West. Yeah. Right. Um, which to this day, I still think there's not a console game out there that looks better than that game. What Gorilla did with that game is just super impressive, yeah. especially for it to have been in development and came out when it came out like we really haven't even seen the height of what next gen systems are capable of because generally you're between three to five years right into from, a system right exactly before you really get um everything that is capable of because even if you look at insomniac spider-man ps4 you know it mm -hmm. came out in 2018 which was five years into um the process of playstation 4 so they maximized that's why the game was so beautiful they got every ounce out of it that they could um so for us to be two years into next gen systems and a game like horizon forbidden west comes out it's just mind-blowing yeah. for it to yeah. look the way that it looks so uh the challenge that i face is that i'm streaming from the ps5 so a game like that'll come out and i want to play it on my oled tv well of course if i'm gaming on the couch uh, my webcam and all that stuff is not on that setup. So I'll right. have to stream straight from the system. So if there's something I haven't done that I would want to do is probably get um, a really posh PC. Yep. You know, I I've got a gaming PC, but it's not a Cadillac. Like it'll run um, like OBS, uh, Streamlabs, it, it'll run all of that. 
Okay. But it, it's not on the level of my console. I get it. Yeah. So yeah, that that's probably what I want to do is make more PC content once I, you know, get a PC that I would feel comfortable enough with, you know, streaming. Yeah, that makes sense. I, and I like that. It's a great answer of like a tech upgrade. You know, um, yes. I think a lot of times, I mean, that's what I always tell people. Like I, I, some people don't even know this, but I record every episode of Venom vlog from my phone. Uh, really? So yeah, yeah, I just, I, and, but it's because I keep upgrading my phone. So like the first two seasons of Venom vlog look very much like a phone from 2017, you know? Got and it. then, uh, and Got then it. like, like I'm getting a new phone next week. So the, there's going to be another upgrade where, uh, you know, I'll have something that just naturally shoots in 2k to 4k now, Absolutely. you know? And so, uh, and, but people will say like, Oh, your content you, it, like the visuals got better. The colors pop more. And I go, yeah, if I finally upgraded my phone, they're like your phone. I'm like, yep. yeah, it's just, this is how I do things. Like I know how to do other things and set up cameras and webcams and get better quality of certain things. But there's a style that I I'm trying to preserve. And sure. I, while still, making things look and sound a little better. And, um, but I, I admit there's still tech things I have to learn about too, um, to do, to do some of that. Um, but for now it's like, my show isn't very, um, it's not high art in any, any way. It's, it's literally just a guy talking about his, his opinion on venom. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> it's, it's not super intense, but it's, if I go out and shoot something, like I went to the set of venom too, uh, when they were filming in San Francisco. Wow. And, and wow. I did a, I did a whole episode of me going there and, and Tom coming over and saying hi to us. And, and yes. do, yeah. And, yes. and that I was yes. like, all right, I'm going to bring a better, I'm going to bring mm -hmm. something better to film with, you know, uh, I'll still have my phone with me, but some shots that I got from far away, I used a better camera. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's cool. I, I would like to tech upgrade at some point too, but really right now I'm just trying to get to episode 1000. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then I'm going to decide whether I keep doing Venom stuff after that, or if I switch and start another character. Um, I'm, I'm not sure yet. Uh, but uh, yeah, this like having you on here and talking about games, which is a passion of mine that I, it's one of those, I don't always get to make time for it. Um, mm -hmm. But, and then some people go, well, why didn't you want, instead of watching my stream the other day, why didn't you play? And I said, because I'm editing so, yes. you know, I, I'm working. And so it's nice to see you play and, and support you too. It's, you know, that's the thing about this is community. And that's one thing yes. we do with uh, yes. Venom. What I love is there's a community built in because he says we are Venom. And it's like, yes. okay, well, we are all parasites. You know, it's a term of endearment from the movie. Um, let me ask you, as a, as a fan of Tony Todd and, and being excited for Spider-Man 2, uh, the video game, I, Cause I always bring it to venom at some point during the show. So like, mm -hmm. what, what is, um, do you have any favorite versions of venom or are you just very excited to see Tony Todd's portrayal? Like I'm kind of curious so I can kind of officially make this a parasite podcast episode and talk about venom. Uh, I'd love to hear kind of your maybe history with the character or just your exposure to the character and, and what you're looking forward to in the next game. Sure. So uh, my history with the character, he was probably the second no, the third villain that I was ever exposed to. Oh, wow. Um, and the reason why that word is super, super important to me is because we grew up in a timeline and, you know, you get this because you're 40 as well. Mm -hmm. We grew up in a timeline where villains were villains, not antiheroes. True. Um, you mm -hmm. know, a bad guy was actually a bad guy. They did and, bad and things. I've, <laughs> I've always cheered for the bad guys. Like, you know, I've always been the person to cheer for the villain because they got the coolest lines. Mm -hmm. um, they do the coolest stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the movies would be pretty boring. Comics would be pretty boring without villains. So, right. um, you know, it's always I was exposed to the Joker first mm -hmm. in 1989, Batman, um, Darth Vader mm -hmm. and Venom. Then there was Venom. Wow. And I bought the issue number one back in the 90s. It was like a, a red fall cover. Oh, Lethal Protector. Uh, yeah, yeah, Le Lethal mm -hmm. Protector. So that was my first uh, comic ever getting exposed to. And okay. I bought it and, and read it. And, you know, from that point forward, you know, Eddie Brock was, was it. <laughs> um, now, I didn't learn until much later that, uh, Todd Far McFarlane and Stan Lee were, you know, co-created Venom. Um, yeah. 
together. Yeah, David I, David Michelini. Um, yes. Was the, yeah, was the writer. Yep. Um, yes. Yep, working with Todd. Yep. A- absolutely. So you know, I I didn't learn that until till later. Um, but but yeah. So that was kind of my first exposure uh, to the character of Venom, and to find that Tony Todd is going to play him. I mean, I just think that it was perfect casting. Uh, whoever the executives were at Insomniac who said, or whoever thought did a think tank and said, who can we get to play Venom? Uh, I just think that's perfect casting. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what the Venom character model looks like in Spider-Man 2. Uh, I just know it's going to be epic. He even said it in the interview, Tony Todd, that, yeah. you know, he put so much work into this that he may even scare himself. And, you know, <laughs> Candyman was um, very frightful you know, growing up as a kid. So I just think somebody with a horror background is the perfect person to cast in playing, you know, everybody's favorite symbiote. Amen to that. I mean, yeah, whoever, clearly someone like you and I were in that room when some executive was like, Hey, so what are we thinking about Venom? And then like, you know, someone like us raised their hand was like, Tony Todd. You're right. Like, <laughs> I hope that person got promoted. Um, yes. Yeah. Cause, uh, cause it is genius. I mean, we do know, so far, at least in this video game universe, that uh, that Harry Osborn is going to be Venom. Um, yes. And so it's it's interesting that Tony is like, um, I wonder like that. What is the symbiote then in this universe? Is it an alien? Is it something created in the lab? Is it a mixture of both? You know, I'm I'm very much looking forward to that aspect of what they do with Venom, and to see if Eddie is even in the story at all. Um, yes. I would love to yeah. see. You know, he doesn't. To me, he doesn't always have to be Venom. Um, but I would love to just see him in the story. They hinted at him in the first game. Um, so I'd love to see him more. And, uh, and I'm also excited because there, now there's a personal touch. Like in the whole first game, we were wondering where Harry was Yes. and, and Peter thinks, you know, bad things have happened to Harry. Mm-hmm. So to have Harry return in his life and be probably his now greatest threat along with Craven, the Hunter is just, I'm so excited and having Absolutely. Craven and Venom together in a single story for a video game. I'm like, Dude, it's like Christmas for me. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and having Tony Todd is great. And I, I'm, I don't know if they announced who's playing Craven yet, but I hope that blows my mind too, uh, whoever they Absolutely. cast. Absolutely. Um, that's awesome, man. Well, before we go, because I, I do want to touch on at least one more thing, which is uh, sure. is kind of your, I guess I want to peek into your passion a little bit more before we head out and just uh, hear some things that like that you're proud of that you've done on your show so far. And then... Um, and then maybe like, cause I know you, we talked about, you know, upgrading tech and stuff like that, but is there, do you have a, a goal, like, you know, like an end goal at some point, or do you just go, I'm going to do this until it's not fun anymore. Is that kind of your mentality with it? Yeah. You know, um, I, I do have an end goal, of course. Um, you know, this is something gaming is also kind of like a passion that, uh, my son has taken up, you know, cool. And growing up, you know, as a gamer, I never had um, parents that were into gaming, you know, best parents in the world. Don't get me wrong. Both of them were in my life. My father was an excellent provider, but, you know, he worked a lot. And so, you know, uh, my dream kind of as a child would have been, you know, coming home and him picking up the joystick and saying, hey, let's play around, you know, this, that and other. Um, but you know, he bought me all the video games that I wanted. And so anything that I thought I wanted, I got it every system. So there was never an issue there, but, uh, you know, gaming with my son, you know, I'm on one side of the man cave on PlayStation. He's on the Mm -hmm. other side of the man cave Mm -hmm. on Xbox, you know, um, I'm online, he's online. And sometimes, you know, he's playing with his friends and this, that, and other. Well, uh, as I'm streaming, I actually see from time to time uh, people from that he's gaming with, you know, yeah. his classmates and stuff that'll come into the stream cool. and they're like, Hey, you know, we know your son and this, that, and other and blah, 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 blah. So my end goal probably would be to hand him this channel someday. Okay. Um, awesome. You know, let him take it on, uh, you know, just kind of like something to leave behind. Uh build it to a point to where I could say, okay, Hey, here, you know, this is yours. Uh, so that, that's probably the end goal, Okay, but you know, it's just been fun. It's not really work because I really enjoy it. Uh, it it is a lot that goes into it, but it's never been a point to where 
I've gotten burned out. And that's only because I don't just go at it extremely hard. I'm doing this on the side because, again, I'm in the auto industry by day. Right. So this is kind of just like my passion project. Uh, so, you know, I'm never really overwhelmed or burnt out behind it. So, yeah, that's probably the end goal is to, you know, one day say, hey, uh, son, here, here's your channel. Here's a channel of like 40,000 subscribers. And right. It's a, but that's awesome. I've never actually never heard anyone say like, you know, my part of my end goal is potentially to make this a legacy channel and, and pass it on, like build it up. Like you said, get a, get, do all that, that legwork, which, you know, people don't realize that, that, that grinding to, to get you to yes. 200 subscribers and 500 subscribers and a yes. thousand and, you know, get monetized and keep going. It's like, it, it is, it's, it's a, it's a, it's Sisyphus rolling the rock up the hill, you know, a lot of times. Um, but yeah, to do that and then have your son go like, Hey man, if you're still into this five, 10 years from now and you want to, you know, take over. Absolutely. Here you go. That's amazing. I mean, that's, that's a cool answer. And I, I think you, you, you're already a great guy. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, but I think you're a great dad. Uh, you sound like a really great dad, man. Um, Thank you, sir. Thank you're, you. Yeah, no problem. And, and I look forward to the, the content you're going to be making. I'm definitely when Spider-Man two comes out and when final fantasy 16 comes out you can bet that you will see me in your stream and your chat like talking your head off and man um, ner it. nerding out with you like absolutely and any and if i can i'll, I'll share them my plan was when spider-man 2 comes out i'm for the first time in a long time i'm going to stream those on my main channel uh normally all my yes. gaming content goes on my gaming channel uh you know but uh but venom i'm like no it's a video game with venom in it like i kind of like midnight suns i gotta put some of that over on the main channel as venom vlog episodes so i will share your your you know, streams anytime you're going live let me know uh you know whether in advance or as you're going live whatever it is i'll share them on my community posts i'll share them on my instagram uh and same i'm gonna do the same thing for evan too like i just you know we are venom right and, uh, yes. and i want to see everyone and their brothers and sisters play this video game. I'm so excited for it. So, uh, so yeah, Thank everyone you. out there, please, uh, Deeper Deaths, if you could one more time, give us a rundown of where people could find you online from, from here on out. Sure, absolutely. So uh, I'm active on Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. My account is at the Deeper Depths. And then if you're on YouTube or if you're on Twitch, uh, I have a channel which is Deeper Depths. Again, you'll see a purple and yellow logo. And, uh, you know, I stream most days, uh, maybe five days a week at least. Uh, sometimes I'm streaming six days. It's generally around this time in the evening, uh, about 6 to 9 p.m., somewhere around there. And uh, we do mix up games on the channel. Of course, I will be cranking out more Spider-Man 2 content and can't wait for Final Fantasy 16 to drop. I'll definitely be playing a lot of that here on the channel. But, uh, yeah, would love to connect with you. Awesome. Yeah. And I'll put all those links down below. And one more thing, because you just reminded me of it. I think I saw you post about it, but the Spider-Man 2 free comic book that came out. Yes. Um, have yes. you had a chance? Do you have it? Do you, have yes. you read it? I, yeah. I've got it. In fact, uh, it's sitting right here next to me now. <laughs> so, uh, awesome. yeah. So yeah, that's by none, Game Reverse. None of the sta uh, stores down here got that book. Um, oh, okay, gotcha. So luckily, I'm a I'm a monthly subscriber to Marvel Unlimited, the digital app. That's so it. they they put it up there for free, and because of the fan uh, fan uh, I guess criticism of like, hey, not everyone got this comic, and Diamond didn't tell you know most comic stores that they could order it and, and things like that. So it's kind of a, a little ball drop there, but uh -huh. it will be posted on Marvel.com uh, soon, if not by now already. So people who are out there who haven't read it, check it out. Cool story with the hood and tarantula. Yes. Um, I really enjoyed it. And I actually, I, I saw your video. I'm like, I'm going to read the book first and then I'll watch his video. So now that's my homework tonight. I'm going to go back and watch your video on it. Um, but awesome. Uh, well, thank you again for making time for us. And yes, uh, I look forward to be on your show. Thank yes. you so much for inviting me. So those of you who watched this and enjoyed our conversation, please come on over, go subscribe to him anyway, be ready for us. Uh, but we're going to be the next episode coming up soon. So uh, deeper, I appreciate you making time for me and, and uh, making time for our audience today and parasites, you know, show this guy some love, subscribe to him, follow him on Twitter everywhere, please. Awesome. Um, so thank you again so much for being here, man. And uh, I'm going to let you guys go. So thanks for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we'll see you all in the future. Peace. Peace.